The amount of light that is getting into this lens is insane. For today's vlog, I decided to grab my bike. So I, I don't want to ride my e-scooter, but I want to grab my bike in the garage here. It's a beautiful day. It's getting really hot. It's like 25, 26 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna enjoy the day riding my bike. For this coding agenda I talk about Spring security because when I build my applications uh, I must secure them and you should do it too. So uh, we have to implement a security layer. This is what I did. The first thing that we have to look at is the dependency. So in that case, you probably know there is a JSON Web Token or G J J W T because it's Java JSON Web Token, and is this is the version 0.12.5. This is the latest version that goes with latest version of Spring. So this is the current and latest dependency for JSON Web Token for Java. Spring patterns we have model view controller three endpoints sign up sign in and then a third and then point for testing if for example a user have a certain authorization or authority as a user or admin to access this specific resource so this is what I created a basic controller uh, with uh, a user model, a user entity for creating my user and um, persisting it in database. Then I sign in and I receive a token, a JSON Web Token and with this JSON Web Token I want to verify 
via my JSON Web Token implementation, if uh, then um, if a certain endpoint slash home allow or slash secured the ability to allow my user to access these resources. security config security configuration class in this class you define the security of your application the security config class is responsible for telling to the application hey this resource must be secured so for example the slash api v1 oath and, and star star and means that those resources that permit all so we can allow these resources to be public because when a user sign in and sign up this is public we don't have to be authenticated to access these resources but then once we are uh, on these routes then the other requests any other requests uh, should be authenticated this is what is uh, the security config class responsible for okay then we have services and the most important service is the one for json web token so i created a jwt service and its implementation you can create directed implementation class or the interface then annotate the implementation as a component or services the jwt service is uh, responsible for handling everything concerning the JSON Web Token that you receive. So extracting the username, the role, the expiration, the claims, um, verify if the token is expired, the validate token, the generate token, the create and having um, some sort of secret key decoded in base64 uh, from a local secret that you won't use in production but only locally and this JWT service you don't inject this as a bin directly into the security config class but in um, an implementation and most of the time you use another class called JWT authentication filter and in this JSON Web Token authentication filter you inject the JWT service the JSON Web Token Auth filter or JWT authentication filter is the one injected in the security config class as a bean. This is the one who does the job every time we we interrogate the resource. So we sign in, we sign up, we have access to a certain resource. So once we type sign in, sign up or I need these secured resources, DJWT auth filter says, okay, let's check if we have a bearer token with a header of authorization, and I check this. If I have one, I have a user, I find a user, otherwise that means I don't have anything, but I, had, I do the filter anyway. So this is the job of the JSON Web Token auth filter. Then we need a user details service in this case I injected the implementation as a bean in my security config class and the user detail service implementation is responsible to check if a user exists via a repository a user repository inject auto ward in my service so every time we uh, have the access to an endpoint sign in sign up the user uh, is responsible for saying hey we have a user or not I couldn't find a user in a repository so it runs every time and in this case if we have a user we return the user optionally otherwise there is an exception a user not found exception and we don't return a user then we have another important service is the authentication service that I created still in my service package and is responsible for two things sign up and sign in so if we sign up we just verify if the user already exists via the repository injected 
If not, we create a user with a role. So we build the user with first name, last name, email, password encoded via the password encoder and a role. We save the user in the repository and we can return the user and the uh, generated JWT token in the response. And then we have the sign-in. And in the sign-in, we use the authentication manager injected. Always we verify with via the repository uh, if the user um, exists or not. And we return the token as well in the response. Remember to have um, a very well splitted uh, folder structures uh, for having those kind of security configurations, services, um, entities for uh, persisting classes, DAOs or DTOs for having just the models that will handle the requests and responses. Um, configurable with the fields you want to return in the response. <laughs>
when do you create your project and your folder structure, what exactly you do. You create like plural names, uh, services, repositories, controllers or just uh, service, repository, um, services, service and implementations, a controller, a DTO or DTOs. Um, models or model entity or entities? Yeah, it's a pretty simple question, but I'm pretty curious to to know what exactly you do organizing your folder structures in your projects. There is a specific pattern when you create Angular projects, for example, in terms of folder structures.